Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my football manager series and we are literally in free fall right now doxy boy let's get to it because this has been poor man this has been really poor so of course in the last episode you saw our back-to-back -back losses away at the STR and then at home to Arsenal as well and following that six games off camera and as you can see the winless run has continued we haven't won a game in 10 and we are in free fall right now just four points picked up from a possible 18, I think. So heading into the runoff camera, we began with 1-1 draw away at Molyneux against Wolves. Matthias Cunha scoring the opening goal. Hammer Traore scored a contentive goal of the season, levelling it, but sadly it was just a point. And then following out a home 3-3 free -free draw against Crystal Palace right before Christmas Day. Uh, this is a really crazy game. Battle back from 3-1 down to claim a point, but I'll be totally honest here. We were lucky and then some. Uh, Elise and Zaha gave Crystal Palace an early two-goal lead before Solanke got us back in the game and then Zaha scored again to get a first half brace and make it 3-1 but in the second half Gaita I mean tremendous shot stopper but absolutely abysmal performance let's just say there were rumours of match fixing come the end of this game because I mean the first goal poor first touch robbed by Solanke but the the second one and our level was 16 minutes to go it is perhaps the worst mistake I've ever seen a goalkeeper make in football manager ever don't ask me what happened here, but uh, yeah, let's just say match-fixing rumours were certainly circulating come the end of that game. But a free-free draw, and then following out a heartbreaking 1-0 loss at home to the league leaders Manchester United on Boxing Day. I played a 5-3-2 in this game and handed Will Andy Appan, our 18-year-old, a uh, pro debut in this game. And we were doing so well to hold on and keep the league leaders at bay with four minutes to go. James Ward-Prowse, I love this guy, but not here on Boxing Day. Sends a long ball over the top and Anthony Martial bags the game winner. We are heartbreak. Absolutely heartbreaking loss there. Some words between me and Ten Hag on the sidelines after Martial bad the game winner there. And then following that, back to back goalless draws. First away at Bramwell Lane in a 0 0 draw against Sheffield United. And then a really, really frustrating 0 0 draw at home to Leeds, where Achoa saved a penalty once again to start New Year off there. Great penalty save. We did score in stoppage time to win it, but it was disallowed for offside. Zlatan playing a great through ball to Batarina, but flag up. Up and unfortunately chalked off through VAR. So the winning, uh, winless run, I should say, continued with another loss in our final game of camera. 2-1 defeat away against Fulham at Croven Cottage. Alexander Mitrovic heading in an early cross to make it 1-0. Sorry, a cross right before the break to make it 1-0. Solanke found our leveller just before the hour mark for Anthony Robinson. The Milton Keynes-born American international scored the game winner and a great strike with 90 minutes to go. As Bournemouth's winless run extended all the way back to the start of November where we beat Spurs. Yup, no wins in our last 10 games in the Premier League. We are in free fall right now. And we dropped down to 12th in the table. We were on the brink of being in a European place. And now we're looking dangerously over our shoulders with the second worst run of form. Sorry, third worst run of form in the division right now. And they're currently now just seven points above the drop zone. Long way to go, 16 games remaining, but uh, right now, I mean, any chance of this is gone as far as I'm concerned. It's all about making sure we finally notch up a win and stay clear of that bottom three. And there's been lots more going on in the run off camera, off the pitch as well. And we'll start with yours truly, where as you can see, I have now got my Continental C coaching license and I'm now studying for a Continental B. These are my attributes, slowly increasing over time, slowly increasing, but of course a long way to go. And there's been some more transfers as well. Kiefer Moore has now left the club and joined America. Uh, so totally happy with that as he was our third choice striker. Ryan Christie has left the Cruisers all. So we, we sold two players to Mexican teams in one transfer window. I think that's the first time I've ever done that in football manager. He was out of contract come the end of the season. So totally fine cashing in and getting basically the same fee I got for Kiefer Moore. And also Ben Pearson as well. Out on loan at Stoke last year. He's joined recently relegated Nottingham Forest for 2.5 mil. He also was out of contract at the end of the season I believe so yeah happy to get his wages off the books and get a small transfer fee as well and because of that as you'll see now we've gone back in the green after raising a few million pounds for those sales there so we're up to just under six million pounds now but the most important thing which I'm really happy about you've never seen Bournemouth in this sale with a lower wage bill than what we're at right now 1.16 mil it's the lowest we've had ever since I took over as Bournemouth manager 
Yep, lowest wage bill Bournemouth have ever had. So far, it's the only positive I can point out in this really poor run of form. But I'm happy with this. I'm really happy we've reduced the wage bill. Oh, and uh, as well, God, there's just so much to show you in Football Manager. I love these games so much, man. Uh, facilities, we have now uh, improved our train of facilities. The work has been completed, and we've jumped up from good to great. So pleased with that. Next up, I want to get my U facilities up as well. There we go. Lovely stuff. Right then, let's jump into the first game of today's episode here as we take on Plymouth Argyle in the FA Cup third round. Yep, the draw was made and we're drawing against the championship side at home park. So it's Devon versus Dorset today as we take on Frank Lampard's Plymouth Argyle. Yep, really looking forward to this one. Struggling in the championship right now, but Plymouth, uh, they're, they're such a great team for an RTG, man. Great location. Plymouth, a great, great place to live if, you got, if you're a footballer and you've got a bit of money living in uh, in, uh, in Devon. But uh, heading into the game, uh, change my tactics in the run of camera. Nothing's worked so far, but hopefully it will today. And as you'll see right now on the injury report, only Philip Billing is down. Traore and Uatara are both away in the African Cup of Nations right now of Ivory Coast and also Burkina Faso as well. Oh, yeah, as well. Uh, uh, Ryan Fredericks, he's going to leave come the end of the season and join Celtic on a free transfer at a contract at the end of the season. Fredericks last year was pretty solid for me, to be fair. But now we've got Kyle Walker-Peters in. I mean, it's it's time to start looking towards the future and selling these players. He's 31 years old now, Fredericks, and obviously only going to get worse. So heading into the game, I've made a new... I say I've, I've, say I've made a new one. It's uh, It's... It's it's um it's it's a preset. I can't, I can't really talk about it as uh, as if it's my own tactic, but it's a preset of a couple of alterations here. It's a ticky tacker style of play, much lower tempo, uh, shorter passing, but of course pressing really really high with a counter press as well. High defensive lines and, and high press in football manager is just a way to go. I think I just changed from positive to attacking. But this is our team. It's 4-2-3-1. And this is our lineup for Plymouth Argyle, where God knows we need a win. Mark Travers between the slips and the back four is Tavares and Essie Meffin and Walker Peters, with Scott and Forsby through the middle. Jaden Anthony on the left, Brooks on the right, and Batarina supporting Dominic Solanke. So it's a strong lineup here, even though we're taking on the championship side, because Lord knows we need a win after 9 in 10. On the bench, Randolph, Zavani, Andy Appan, Fredericks Cook, Lerma, Rothwell, Tavernier and Zlatan as well. First of two games, it's Frankie Lampard's Plymouth Argyle in Devon, and Lord knows we need a win. Come on, Bournemouth. Plymouth in abysmal form in the Championship, Bournemouth in abysmal form in the Premier League, so. I mean, oh, it's David Brooks curls one wide. It's a battle of two teams right now that desperately need a win to start picking up some points or give them confidence to start picking up points in their respective divisions. But we, we've got the quality. I've got a strong lineup out there as well. This needs to be a win. Like, if we can't win this game, I, I, I don't see... I, <laughs> I don't see where our next win comes from. Put it this way. Come on, boys. Come on. Oh, overwhelmed and pressured. Lads, I'm facing a bloody pressure right now. You've got contracts. Mine could be terminated just like that. Ten minutes to go before the break. Nothing. Other than that one chance of Brooks. Nothing. And a free kick for Plymouth. Floated in. Oh my god. We're in trouble, man. Like, we are in trouble. I don't like what I've just seen from this team. I really don't. Understandably, we are playing a new system. Yes, it's very low tempo and much shorter pass. Let's, let's up the tempo now in the second half. I do quite like to do this against teams who I feel as though we're better than and have better fitness down as well. Load them to sleep and then in the second half, get more energy and play at a higher tempo and try and wear them out that way. So, second half begins. It's nil-nil. Guys, we can't afford a loss here. Like, we really can't. Our season is on the verge of implosion. And it could all start here. Half an hour to go. And I'm going to ask my wife to play a little bit more direct and now play at the highest possible tempo. Be more expressive as well. We are missing Traore so much, man. We really are. He is so, so good for us. Let's bring on Tavernier for David Brooks. He normally can be a difference maker at times like this as we're still tied at 0-0. But here's a highlight for the Cherries with Nuno Tavares sliding through. Jaden Anthony who crosses and Solanke denied. Come on, boys. Oh, God, no. No, no. Barnes. Oh, I don't believe it. Nuno, did he step up on time? He didn't. Plymouth Argyle lead Bournemouth. Stevanovic crosses into the middle and Ashley Barnes beats the offside trap and gives Plymouth the lead. I can't believe this. Well, if you weren't believing that we are in danger before, you certainly will be now. Bournemouth heading out of the FA Cup to a struggling Frank Lampard, Plymouth Argyle team. 
Marcus Tavernier. Solanke, oh my god, that is Steven Gerrard missed penalty against Blackburn Rovers. He literally fluffed it on purpose, he wants me gone, he wants me gone. The fans are starting to turn on me. Bournemouth have been humiliated. Sacked in the morning, you're getting sacked in the morning. Sacked in the morning, you're getting sacked in the morning. We've lost the banker. We have just lost a banker. When that draw was made, I thought, thank God for that. We're finally going to end our winless run. We've lost it. We've been humiliated. Uh, we've got tough fixtures coming. I ain't going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm worried. I'm really worried. Yes, our finances have never looked healthier, but we are, we are in trouble. We are in deep, deep trouble. Right, this is my go-to here. Community outreach session on Friday night. Sod, sod having a rest and going home and playing Call of Duty with the lads. No, 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 no. We're going to the local children's hospital. We're going to apologise to all the fans and show we are still a team that care if we're not delivering on the pitch. And then on Sunday, Saturday morning, we, we're going hang gliding. We've got to start feeling good about ourselves again. I can't believe we lost that. I really can't. I know it doesn't count towards our objective, so whilst it will decrease by 5% because it is a, uh, a cup set, it's not going to be too big of a deal to the to the board. But even so, that, that was the banker. That was the game we win, like 2 or 3-0. Finally scratch, get ourselves a victory, and, and get ourselves feeling good again. We fucking lost. We lost to Plymouth. The bank is closed. So with our lack of squad depth and our financial situation being quite precarious, what I have done is you were just seeing there is loan in Hannibal, Hannibal the Animal from Manchester United. Uh, he was out on loan at Birmingham last year, had a pretty decent season in the championship. So we, we picked him up, could play in a wide variety of positions in the offensive areas. So yeah, great determination, good teamwork, good work, right? Physically he's all right as well and technically quite solid as well. So we, we needed that. We've got a very small squad here, but also he signed him on very low weight as well he's away with Tunisia the, uh, the African Cup of Nations right now but it's it's good to get ourselves a little bit more squad depth he's not the sort of player that can make the difference but he does make up the numbers if nothing else oh for fuck's sake can't afford to have a virus spreading so we're going to send Sanessi home there wrap up warm for goodness sake honestly oh I'm starting to get pissed off man <laughs> like seriously I'm starting to get pissed off now it's fucking January in Bournemouth, all right? It's not bloody January in Buenos Aires. I'm so, I'm starting to get angry now. Like, we are literally screwed at this point. Right then, second and final game of today's episode. Newcastle at home, chasing a European place. And we are chasing our first win in 11. Heading into this game. We've got a game in hand on the teams below us right now. So if we win this, we can jump into the top 10. But I'll take a point in this game, no doubt about it. If we've got a stumble to safety for the rest of the season, so bloody be it. Right now, uh, as you can see, Sanessi uh, is down with that virus. Uh, Anthony got a knock in the Plymouth game. Uh, Traore is still away. And of course, Hannibal, we won't see him come to the team until the African of nations is over and this is our lineup: of Choa, back between the sticks back four of Kelly Zabani Meth and Walker Peters as Scott Lerma and Batarina are our midfield trio Tavernier is on the left Brooks is on the right and Solanke is up top as we switch back to our 4-3-3 Gigan press on the bench Travers Billing Tavare, uh, Tavares Frederick Cook Forsby Rothwell Uatara back from the Africa of nations and Zlatan as well second and final game it's Newcastle I know we desperately need wins but I'll take a point come on you cherries dear oh dear come on Bournemouth come on lots of different tactical systems used in a run off camera nothing worked whatsoever so back to the good old faithful high line high press Gigan press and let's see if we can at least get a point here so far so good 10 minutes to go for the break I'll take a clean sheet and a point every day of the week so first highlight of the second half coming to Bournemouth Lerma wins it back and now David Brooks slides through Dominic Solanke who's denied by Emmy Martinez who I wanted in the summer he had no interest in joining me and it's pretty clear as to why. Solanke, really struggling recently. Had a red-hot start to the season, but recently he's really struggling out there. Still 0-0 and a golden chance burned. I don't want to take him off as Latin because Latin doesn't work as hard out of possession. And that's really important in a Gigan press system like ours with a high, high, high line of engagement. Oh dear, I can see Newcastle winning this. They've, they've done nothing all game, but they'll get one chance, they'll take it, and that'll be it. I can just see it coming now. As they attack down the right-hand side. Now Joel Linton reinventing himself under Eddie Howe. As the ball sent through to Callum Wilson. What a big save by Ochoa. 
Five minutes to go, still nil-nil, and I'll take the clean sheet and point. We could win it here, free kick, Batarina, 25 yards from goal, and the Croatian 20-year-old, oh, bends it just over. But there's another highlight as both teams are going for a late winner. David Brooks down the right, into Batarina, cross the far post, is cleared away, and Lerma wins it back! What a save, Emmy Martinez! What a save. And it's all kicking off in stoppage time. Actually, I think that's going to be that. Nothing came of that. Cannon, Wilson, Flack, side. Look at David Brooks there, Chris. There you go. Go on, one final chance. Brooksy boy. Tavares, keep it in play. Oh! And that'll do it. We'll take the point. We'll take the point in a clean sheet. I would have had it pre-game, and I'll take it. I'll take it. Bournemouth still searching for that first win in such a long time. For fuck's sake. I swear, every other week we're giving like half a million or a million to Feyenoord or Middlesbrough or Dynamo Kiev. It's ridiculous, man. Traore doing well for the Ivory Coast. We want him back, man. No wins in our last 11. 12, you count the Plymouth game. It is a point. It is a clean sheet. It does see us extend the gap on the bottom three gradually, but... We're only eight points clear of the bottom three. Believe me, we need that first win because 15 games to go, we are still far from safe. Right, guys, that'll do it for today's episode of the Football Manager Series. If you enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and we'll return with games against. Oh, man. I really, 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 really want to play that West Brom game because that's going to be huge there. If we can't beat bottom plays at home, we've got no chance of survival, but it's too far away, I think. Let's come back around. Maybe maybe here, maybe Brentford and, and Liverpool, or maybe Wolves and Arsenal. I don't know. We'll, we'll play a few games off camera anyway, and then uh, and then we'll return in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Football Manager Series with Bournemouth still searching for a win very soon.